Hey guys, Garrett 97 again, once again with some more new loot. A uh, hell of a lot of Japanese video games, and let's immediately start off with the most, well with the one thing I was looking forward to the most, Nintendo Super Famicom. I say now I can finally play those games I got in the previous new loot. So yeah, essentially, uh, this was really cheap, 17 bucks, it didn't come with any controllers or any of the cables, but it does use I well, can use any uh, Super Nintendo controller on it. And as for the cables, power supply was 15 bucks and the RGB cable to connect it to the television was two bucks. And on top of that, uh, the seller has this policy going on. When you buy a console, you get a giant discount on shipping. So essentially, it was almost worth purchasing this just to save on shipping. And in it, we have Gundam F91, well, uh, Formula Wars F91, really interesting game, but got a lot of title, F91 features the Gundam F90. And so far, I haven't seen the F91 in it. Neither have I seen this Gundam in it. Well, the Gundam I have seen, but not with the VS, VSBR equipment, with all the things going on it. Um, I've currently only seen the assault version and the destroyed version that's all i can pick from and i've so i've played the first three missions gotta say it's an interesting game not definitely not the best unfortunately it's in japanese so i can't understand the story which is apparently really really awesome and graphics look absolutely fantastic gameplay is a bit well you like it or you hate it then we got two more box games. We have uh, SD Gundam GX, uh, Gashapon Wars. And actually, this is a very cool thing. I absolutely wasn't expecting this kind of gameplay at all. It, when you look at it, it feels like uh, the SD Gundam games or the um, Super Robot Wars games kind of just maneuver them around on a grid and then you click attack. But once you attack, it actually gives you a screen like this and you pilot the Gundam and you try to shoot down the enemy mobile suits that you have engaged and this is actually something I've always wanted a game like this because you know when in strategy games you move your characters to there and they have an well an X percentage percentage chance of taking down the enemy but now you actually control everything by yourself so I'm really, really looking forward to playing this game after I finished F91. And then this was um, Batoru Roboto Sensen. Or once again, um, feels like Super Robot Wars. I haven't really tried it. I tried it out once to see if it worked. And it's similar to Super Robot Wars, but they move different than the attacks. I haven't really figured them out all that much. Mainly I engaged, um, I booted up one of the save files that was on it and I was fighting against the Sazabi with the new Gundam. Sazabi had like 9,000 hit points and a single shot of the beam rifle, well from the new Gundam's beam rifle, dealt 30 damage. I think I'm missing something. I think I'm missing something substantial. Because then um, the computer attacked the Sazabi with uh, the Zeta Gundam and Camille, and he hit her for around 2000 damage. I think I'm really missing something pretty damn important. I'll have to figure that out. Then, some more for the Super Famicom. Not box, but it did came with a manual Sailor Moon. Or, as people will probably be more familiar with it. Well, this is essentially Streets of Rage or um, whatever else. Wow, it has, it has some other name. I can't for the life of me remember it. Uh, Streets of Rage um, with Sailor Moon characters, essentially. And the attacks are very monotonous. They have like their basic attacks. Um, well, it's honestly not that great a game, but I only paid five bucks for it, so I can't really complain that much. But yeah, I tried out and it, when you look at the manual, it looks like they have a pretty sizable amount of attacks. Look, look at all these attacks, but that's like you have, you have a normal attack, you can chain your, you can chain your normal attack, uh, you can charge up your normal attack, you have a struggle attack, um, 
which drains your health, which is great. And you have like one really nice attack that actually looks pretty damn good. And yeah, it drains your health. That's great. So if you want to mix things up, tough luck. You're just going to beat your opponents into oblivion. And oh yeah, you can jump and then do an attack. That's like listing every single thing you can do as a separate attack. Well, then it's not that difficult to get a giant attack roster while actually having almost no attacks at all. And the worst thing of it all is if you're familiar with the Super Famicom controller, that thing has like a directional pad and six buttons. This game uses a directional pad and two buttons. It's a fighting game that doesn't even use half of the buttons on it. And it only has six of them. And really, it's not something I'm missing. You can see quite clearly Y button, Y button, Y button, B button, B button, B button, B button. Um, press a key, Y button, press the Y button. Yes, you're going to be pressing that Y button a lot. I hope you like pressing the Y button. Traps are pretty damn good, though. So that's something, I guess. Then I got this game. Yes, it was cheap, it looked intriguing, and I felt, hey, why not buy a visual novel for the Super Famicom? Well, I thought it was a visual novel because of what it looked like, and, well, it turns out it is a visual novel, as I expected, but a quite intriguing, well, intriguing, I say, it looks vaguely interesting. It actually reminds me a lot of an Evangelion game I played on my DS. It was like one of those, well, essentially, you have your main character, well, actually, I'm not even sure if it's a dating game. Because you have your character, and you kind of have them do different kinds of stuff, so it's kind of like you're playing as the girl, going through daily life, and you choose what you want the girl to do, so... No, maybe this one of those princess make... No, I'm not even sure what... Actually, I'm confused now. And when you play the game, it gets even more confusing, because I was clicking around, um, trying to find out what the hell I was supposed to do, and I stumbled across a store. Yes, just a general convenience store, and guess what they were selling? They were selling... a handgun, a rifle, a beam rifle, a grenade launcher, and a bazooka. Let's put this game away and look at it some other time again. And then we have Xardian, or as I like to call it, not Gundam. Pretty much side-scrolling shooter game. Pretty fun, and I finally found a use for my Pro Pad. And that's all for the Super Famicom, so let's move it out of the way. And we're getting to Game Boy territory. For, you know what, we're with the consoles, so let's continue with the consoles. For PlayStation 1, we have Gundam The Something. Pretty much from what I understand is this is Shogi but with a Gundam skin on it, and, well, I wouldn't mind learning how to play Shogi, and if I can use Gundam to do it, all the better. I played Shogi once against a friend, and essentially neither of us really had an idea what the hell we were doing, and I think I won, or he just, or he just said, man, I don't understand shit about this, I just quit. Either one of those. Most important thing is, and here we have a real robot uh, battle something. And from what I can understand, this is once again a Super Robot Wars game. Well, a Super Robot Wars-like game, but we're getting the actual models and not super deformed. And I had a quick look at the manual, and we're even getting the new Gundam, so... And here we have the Elgheim, Dunbine, 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 or however you pronounce that. So, also, looking forward to giving this game a shot. Then we have Yu Yu Hakusho for the PlayStation 2. Recently got into Yu Yu Hakusho. Really nice show. Should have watched it earlier. But hey, PlayStation 2, Yu Yu Hakusho forever. And, well, from the looks of it, this is just going to be a generic fighting game with the Yu Yu Hakusho characters on it. Not too bad. Next up, we have Gundam Seed Never Ending Tomorrow, or as I like to call it, the bad uh, Cosmic Era version of Gundam Encounters in Space. And not just because it's Gundam Seed, but actually because it... Eh, the play feels a bit weird. I don't know what's, uh, what's wrong with it, but Encounters in, in Space played a lot better, looked a lot better. And yeah, 
pretty much this is just encounters in space made worse with cosmic characters. They do have a really nice mobile suit selection, though, all kinds of MSVs. Uh, we have here the. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, one of um, some stray things. Um, this one, Sword Calamity. And a uh, space variant of the M1 Astray. And my final game for the PlayStation 2 is Negima from my favorite manga artist Ken Akematsu, Negima the Second Something. And yeah, essentially a limited edition comes with a DVD, which looks quite similar on both sides. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, Mahora Girls, second sub. <clears throat> Let's put that away. Nobody saw that. And then when we look at the... Oh, shit. I honestly just noticed 018. What the fuck did I buy? That... What is this about? What is this about? Um, we have an 18 plus Negima game. Hmm. Game hint battle part training part status screen. Ooh, status screen. Uh, battle part field part game flow. Push, yes, because we obviously need the manual to tell us how to get the fucking game out of it. I mean, if it's a plus 18 game, we can probably assume that you know how to remove a CD, but... What is this about? I mean, I know Negima isn't the most PG game out there, but... Plus 18? Like, what, did I just genuinely buy a hentai game for my PlayStation 2? Well, I know that I'm complaining that much, but what? Seriously, the insight. Maybe I should just stop talking about this and um, move on. Yeah, I'm quite... I'm, I genuinely don't know what the hell to say. I mean, I know I was getting an Enigma game, but seriously, this 18... The 18 symbol, I seriously just noticed that. <clears throat> Moving on, let's make matters worse with another Negima game, which is 12 plus, and that's that's like the age Negima should be. Negima should be 12 plus. It has like some well sexually oriented humor, but to warrant an 18 plus, what the hell do you have to do in that game? Anyways, moving on, moving swiftly on to another limited edition, and this essentially comes with a little. CD, if it wants to come out. There we go. So, a tiny little CD. I tried playing the game a little bit, but essentially I got a lot of, uh, a lot of talking and then the game crashed. So currently I have no idea what you're supposed to do in the game. But... No. No. Um, from what I can tell, it's, it's a lot of... Well, it's... A lot of talking, then some fighting, I guess? Well, I'll find out soon enough, I guess. Maybe I should try to make a gaming channel with Let's Plays, like everyone else does. Then, now, let's move on with some other things. Network Adventure Bugsite Limited. Though the limited isn't exactly that limited, because I think um, it was never made as an unlimited version. The only version you can buy from Bugsite is limited. Always great for limited editions, right? So essentially, it's Sword Art Online! Well, who knows, it might actually be, because this is like a game about an online game. And the cool thing is, you're getting a sensor that you can plug into your Game Boy Color. And then when you hook it up to the top, you can scan things. And also I'm sort of making lights, but I guess it only uh, flickers when you have Bugside Limited in it. So yeah, I 
really intrigued by what this scanner is actually for, because well, I think it come with a card. Yep. Yeah. Ew, jump cut. Well, essentially the card has a code on it and, well, just for precaution, I'll hide the last half of the code. You never know. But essentially there's nothing really to scan on this card. It's just some talk about a release thing. So is this just some kind of promotion thing? But then what are you supposed to do with the scanning thing? Who knows? Maybe I really should do a gaming channel where I try to figure out how this works. Well, who knows? Who can tell? Something to think about for next year. Then we have Tales of... What was this? Fantasia. Fantasia, not Eternia. Uh, Tales of Fantasia for the Game Boy Color. And unfortunately, this does not use uh, the usual Tales of Symphonia battle... Uh, Tales of Symphonia. <laughs> the usual Tales of games uh, battle system. This just looks like your average Final Fantasy-like-esque RPG. But then again, it's a Tales game. And I wonder how this is going to work. No resale. Honestly, I didn't buy it. I got it for free. And yeah, essentially Tales of Fantasia. I think this also got a remake. I'm actually 100% sure this got a remake, even in English. So, well, I got this for cheap. This was like, I don't know, three bucks or something. So for three bucks, I said, well, it's a Tales game. Yes, it got a remake, but I'll take this up nonetheless. It's boxed, it's complete. So yeah, couldn't resist. Then, next up, Yu Yu Hakusho for the Game Boy. Didn't come with a manual, but I gotta say the game... For a Game Boy game? Pretty nice. I still gotta work out how to pull off all the special moves, though. I might just have to look up um, a guide on Game Facts for that. That's probably the easiest solution for that. So yeah, the game plays really nice. And I gotta say, graphics for the Game Boy? Commendable. And hey, for an anime licensed game? I think this is as good as it's gonna get. It even has a few mini games in between the stages where you can choose between um, now what was it? Botan, Poo, and uh, someone else. No, wait, his girlfriend, of course. And you kind of have to catch little things that give you bonuses and avoid the bomb. So it's a nifty little game. And then uh, Super Robot Wars Link Battler. No, you're not fighting Link from The Legend of Zelda. I honestly have no idea where uh, the Link really comes in. Maybe they just want you to... Or maybe this is the first one that allows you to link two Game Boys together a la Pokemon. Maybe that's what they're referring to. Uh, maybe you can fight each other? Actually, that wouldn't be too bad. That would be an interesting concept. Finding it out with Super Robot Wars. Actually, that's a pretty damn good idea for a game. You can have your own robot army and try to fight each other Super Robot War style. I should get tried to the game a little bit more. And then the final game is the odd one out, because it's actually an English game, but it came from the same seller, so I thought I was going to get the Japanese version of Sega Arcade Gallery. But no, it's just plain English, it's the American version. Uh, oh, here we are. For sale, rental, and use only in USA, Canada, Mexico, and Latin America? What is up with you people only wanting to sell stuff in your own goddamn countries? European games never had this shit on them. Because that's why I assumed that the Japanese were the odd ones out, because they set for sale, for use and sale in Japan only. So now America's doing it too? So, well, America has been doing it too. Why? Why? And this makes no sense at all. If I want to buy an American game, why would you want to stop me? And wasn't America supposed to be the land of the free? Well, yes, you are free as long as you live within our borders. Or the borders of Latin America, and or Mexico, and or Canada. Otherwise, you are not free to purchase our games. Fuck you, have a nice day. What the hell? Come on, man. For sale and using America and Japan only. Huh. I should stop buying their games. Nah.